Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Paracords of Kindness. How you doing today? Hopefully your weaving's been happy. Okay, what I have for you today is I'm going to show you how I do a stitched or a double stitched orca jawbone. Here's one. It has no stitching. Let's pull the light over here so hopefully you can see this a little bit better. This is rust and burgundy. Here's one that's olive drab. These are my favorite color combinations. Olive drab, maroon, and gold. And that's kind of the kind of the color idea that I'm going to be working on today. Here's one I did recently. Black, and then it's imperial red. If it'll focus. Imperial red and black shockwave with imperial red stitching. And here's the one we're going to be working on today. This is stealth olive and then black and olive shockwave. And it's hard to see on camera, but there's maroon stitching right there. And then there's gold. Hence why I call it the double stitched orca jawbone. But, you want to know how to make it? And get all the tips, tricks, and commentary that I'm known for? Stick around, because we'll get right to it, folks. Okay, folks, I'm back. I'm set up. I'm ready to go. But as always, let me say a few things before we get into the actual weaving. First off, um, thanks to all the new subscribers. My channel is growing, and I appreciate it. If you're new here, I'll tell you this. My videos tend to be longer than your average YouTube tutorial. Why? Because I give tips, tricks, and commentary. Things I have learned through my experience, through my struggles. And I try to share that with the viewer. Uh, I put it simply. Not only am I going to tell you over here, under there, pull tight. But I'm going to try to tell you which direction to pull and how tight to pull it. Make sense? Okay, now, <laughs> the next thing, I say this at the beginning of all my videos, I am not a filmmaker. I don't have the best equipment. The lighting's not the best. Sound quality, video quality. This thing is notorious for not wanting to stay in focus and for me getting out of frame. For all that, I apologize. But for those who know me and those who don't, hopefully you'll see, I know how to make a paracord bracelet and... I try to explain thoroughly what I'm doing and how to do it. That way you'll know how to do this. Okay? Um, now, shameless plug. Stitched sidestep. Link for this tutorial will be in the cards along with the link to this, a stitched modified trilobite. Both will be in the cards and if I remember, I'll put it in the description below. Okay, next. Um, I'll say this, from this, from this point forward, from this video forward, every video, even though I may give you measurements of cord and all that kind of stuff, whatever, the final amended measurements and everything you'll need to know will be in the description. Look to that first, because the measurements I give you in the beginning may not be what we end up using. Okay, because many of you know me, I would rather have to cut off seven feet of scrap in the end than to begin weaving and get down to this point and go, oh, I don't have enough cord, right? That's the most frustrating thing in the world, and it's a waste of effort, except for the fact that you practice a weave on a brace that you can't finish. You got to practice, but that's about it, right? And I hate that, and I've learned, don't do that. So a lot of times I'll overestimate the amount of cord, but I'll always, most of the time in the end of the video when I go to cut and burn, I'll show you how much slack I have, but no matter, I'll have all the amended numbers in the description. Look to that, okay? And take into consideration, the bracelet size I'm making may not be your size, so you have to adjust. That's where, you know, educated guesses come in. Okay, now, with that said, oh... This is a six-strand core. If you don't know how to do that, 
The link to my Core Strand Setup playlist is definitely in the description. Go there and look at that. Also, because of the nature of this, now this can be done in one color. One big long piece of cord, no problem. But I'm doing it in two separate colors. And because of that, you have to join two cords together, right? You can use the Manning method. If you know how to do that, by all means, go for it. Um, I personally, I don't prefer that method. I don't really like it very much. I simply melt and weld the two cords together. Now, I know some people, they don't think it's strong or whatever. I'm going to tell you, this is polyester and this is nylon, right? If you don't know how to do it, if you're unsure, if you want to hear my explanation of how I do this, and it holds, because for those who watch my videos know I put some tension on my jig, because in the end, when I go to take it off, I'll let you see how poop it pops and the tension's released. So there's some tension on this. So this, this meld, or this weld right here where my thumb is, where these two cords are joined, it's holding. That will be in a playlist. There's a link to a playlist below called Tips and Tricks Playlist. There's a video in that playlist. And let me see. What's it titled? Um, Give me just a second and pull this up. And I'll tell you exactly what it's called. The name of that video, if I'm not mistaken, it's the second video in that playlist. It's called You Cannot Weld Polyester and Nylon Cords. Or can you? Go and watch it. Right? Um, agree or disagree, but it's a matter of opinion. No one method, many or simply welding them, is best. Because that's a matter of opinion. But this is the one I like. Okay, now, with that said. Um... I'll start off, I'll start off with this. This is a 15 millimeter black tactical buckle, or a 5 8 inch, if you want to use that measurement. This is what they look like. Alright. You can get these at various places, online, Amazon, various sites. I get mine from Paracord EU, a company based in Northern Europe in the Netherlands. Or Amsterdam. That's where I get mine. Okay. Um, let's see. What's next? The add two for this bracelet. If you don't understand what I mean when I say add two. Today we're going to be making. Let me throw this in there. Today we'll be making this for my wrist. And as always, when I get completely done at the very end. And I do all my cut and burns and I have a final finished product. I will trial by fire test right there on camera to see if it's going to fit and how well it fits, right? So take into consideration that at the end and what I'm telling you now as the add to measurement. Makes sense, but it'll be in the description below. Okay, the add to, if you don't understand what I mean when I say that, my wrist is 7 inch wrist. And we know that you cannot take a 7 inch measurement I measure your jig out. Measuring on your jig from connection point between these two buckle halves, between the male and the, or the male and the female end, the connection point from this connection point to the connection point at the bottom. You can't measure that to be seven inches like a wrist measurement. You have to add two, which takes into consideration the thickness of the bracelet in order for it to fit correctly. Because if I simply measure this out at 7 inches, which is what my wrist is, the bracelet will be too small. Right? The add to for this one, in this case, is 2 inches. I know it sounds like a lot, but this is a, a thicker bracelet. It doesn't look like it from the front. But, like I'm going to start doing on all of my videos, I'm going to show you give you a good look at the thickness of it. Right? I know a lot of times the these YouTube tutorials, they'll show you the bracelet, oh, it's so pretty and all that, but they don't actually give you a good shot of how thick it is. So, you know. I 
I'll even do this for you. What is that? It's about a five eighths of an inch thick, roughly, and half inch to five eighths of an inch, give or take. So if you if you using that the formula, there you go. Here's your number to put in your formula. But you see, right? Okay, just so we know, for the purpose of this video, this color in the middle, this red and black shockwave pattern, this right there in the middle, that's the accent. That would be this. The side, the black, in the case of this, that's the main cord of the bracelet. That's what I'm going to call it. The stealth olive, in this case. Okay, so with our cord, 5 8 inch buckle, add to 2 inches. I've got 10 feet of stealth olive. And 10 feet of what is black and olive in the shockwave pattern. I'll let you see this. Now, I know this color, this cord right here, it appears very dark. It is a very, very dark green. It's like olive. What olive drab is to olive, this is to olive drab. It's that much darker. But it is a green looking color. Okay. Polyester, nylon. 10 feet of each, and I have welded them together right here, right here where my finger is, okay, now, it's a six strand core, like I said, if you don't know how to do that, core strand setup playlist in the description below, go check it out, and I'll show you how to do it, but in the case of this, since we're, it's 10 feet and 10 feet, the halfway point is that meld point, and we don't want the meld right down there at the halfway point where we hitch it to the bottom buckle. So I've offset it about three inches, okay? But a crash course in a six strand setup. Cow hitch, single cow hitch at the bottom, run up, go through, come down, run up. And if you watch my videos, you'll know these two little knots that I always do to lock it in place. That way when I wrench down the tension on my jig, it holds everything in place. Okay. Now, with all that said, I think that's everything. We'll get to weaving. Um, I'll say this one. If you, if you've got fids, or lacing needles, stitching needles, whatever you, whatever you want to call them, you know what I'm saying? Where you put your, cord in the back. I would recommend using one for this weave on the accent color. You don't have to have one, but for me, it makes things a little easier. And you'll see why here in a minute, why I say use it, okay? So if you got one, go ahead and put you one on the end of your accent piece. Alright? Now, with all that shit, I got a lot of these bracelets. It doesn't matter which side you've got your main cord, main cord or your accent cord. It doesn't matter which side you put them on. Just be mindful when you start weaving, you got to make a difference between the two and the way you weave it. Now, this can be done, like I said, in one solid color. No problem. And, you know, in fact, I've never done one of these in a solid color. You know, I may end up doing that this coming week, doing one. I've got a customer who likes, he likes black, blackout. You know, solid black bracelet. He, he, he'll have me making the bracelet black on black and stitched in black. And extra stitching in black. He likes them that way. <laughs> and while they make for a, a cool looking bracelet, sometimes it can be difficult. Because you've got, you know, eight strands and they're all black. And you're trying to, it's like wrestling with the underwater wrestling with a squid in the dark. While you're blind. <laughs> I mean, everything's black. You can't see it. Anyway, I'm... Anyway. Okay. With this one said, I'll say this. This weave... Um, people have heard me talk about tension consistency. Meaning, when you pull your cords, pull them with the same amount of tension every time. Right? Also, the direction you pull. Sometimes... A lot of people have never thought about this, like a basic, basic Solomon bar, a Cobra bar, Solomon weave, whatever. You just weave it and you can pull it. Straight out to the side every time. Same amount of tension. It doesn't have to be a lot of tension and it doesn't have to be light tension. It's just the same amount every 
excuse me, every time. But the direction you pull it doesn't really matter on a Solomon bar. And there are some bracelets, some weaves, that the amount of tension comes into effect and also the direction you pull the cord to tighten it up comes into effect. All those factors kind of come into effect on this one. Okay? Now, with that said, this is one of these bracelets that the knot, the weave itself, one repetition, you can't simply, like a Solomon bar, you can't simply pull over under here and then pull. And it all tighten up. You can't do that with this one. You have to weave the thing together. Then you tighten this section of the knot up. Then you tighten this section of the knot up. Then you tighten this section of the knot up. We understand that? You can't simply take your working end and pull it and expect that knot to tighten up. It won't. You'll have big gaps in it. So you have to do it in section. And that's that kind of is where the confusion in this one comes in. But if you pay attention, I'm going to show you how I do this. You come up with your own way, but this is the way I do this. Okay? So, with all that said, let's get to weaving. 5 eighths inch buckle, add to 2 inches, 10 feet of each, 6 string core. Bam. There's your, there's your numbers. And we, we are going to stitch this. If you look on this one, I've done... I've done an imperial red that's following the black. Today, I'm actually going to do that and a stitch right here in the middle that's following the accent. So we're going to have two separate stitchings. Which, in, in fact, it's going to be four because this is two separate red stitchings going down the side. Like one, one piece of stitching on one side, one piece on the other side. And then the middle is going to be the same way. So we're going to have four pieces of stitching. Makes sense? And hopefully this thing's going to look good. The, the colors I have chosen. Okay, now with all that said, I'm gonna zoom in, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to show you how this is done. It's not it's 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 where you put your cord over and under through the core strands. That's not the hard part. It's getting the thing orientated right and then tighten it up. That's where the confusion. That's the difficulty in this. One. Makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna show you. And once you kind of get this, it's, it's, once you do it two or three times, you'll have it. And it's no problem. Because I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how I do this, okay? Okay. If we notice, from this mailed point, if you look right here where my thumb is, maybe you can see this. You got the stealth olive down here, and then from here up, it's the, the accent color. The moss and the black shockwave, okay? So, from here up on this core strand, this side is six strands. So, on this side, these three are the accent color, and these three on this side are the stealth olive, right? So, you got the middle slot right down the middle. You got three on one side and three on the other. That's the slot we're always going to go through every single time. So, that right there alleviates some co potential confusion. We're always going through this slot. You just got to remember up here, down here, down there, where at. Right? You'll see in a second. Okay, now, <clears throat> first things first, we've got to get this set up. Because right now, we're not completely set up. For those who know how to do a fishtail, you know, before you actually start the weave of the fishtail, you have to set it up. Meaning, you have to get both cords on the same, both working strands on the same side of the bracelet. Then you start your pattern. Right? Same thing with this. But we don't have to get them on the same side. We've just got to set it up. And I'm going to show you how to do this. It's not hard. It's pretty simple. It's the basic thing over and over and over. you just got to pay attention as you do it. Okay, so we'll start. We're going to start off with our main color. Right? All we're going to do is go over three, through that middle slot, and under three. Right? So we're going to go over these first three. We're going to go through the slot, through that middle lane, and under these three here, and just pull your slack through. Okay. Now this loop, we're going to maintain this loop. 
if you watched, what was it, the last video, I think the tutorial for this, I talk about it, maintaining this loop. So all we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to just pull it up, but we're going to leave that loop there. Okay, now, pay attention to this. The main strand is over the top of the accent. You see that? It's over the top. Or you could say the accent is going underneath this one. Right? So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to follow it all the way out to the end where I have the fit on there. Or the lacing there. Whatever. I'm going to refer to it as a fit. And you'll see why I put it on here. This is part of it, but you'll see in a second why even more so. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that middle lane again. Over three, under three. But I'm going to do it above where this one's going through. So not down here where my fingers are, but up above here in this section up here, right? I'm going to just go through the middle. And I'm going to pull it out this direction. I'm just pull the majority. Hang on, I'm getting tangled up. All my excess is getting tangled up. Just pull, pull it through. Mindful of your twist. I say that a thousand times. Mindful of your twist. We well, see that twist right there? You got to get those out. When you weave one of these bracelets, you got to get them twists out. Okay. Now. We see how I've got this set up. Let me see if I can zoom in one more time. Just so you can see it two more times. So you can see how I've got this set up. We started off with our main cord. Going th over these first three. Through the middle slot and coming out. Then on this side we took our accent cord and we go underneath. Always underneath. And then through the slot, but above this one. And it comes out on this side. So it's the same thing. Over th coming from this direction, over three, under three. And this one goes under here, and then it goes over three, under three, but up here in this section. Right? Okay. Now, pay attention. This is where we get into the, you got to tighten in this section, in this section, in this section. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to maintain this loop. Leave this loop. Don't pull it. Leave it here. Leave, leave it a little bit. Okay, now we're going to take this. I'm going to just pull it tight. Okay, now be mindful. I'm going to use, where, did it, where is it at? My handy dandy laser paracorder pointer. If you've seen my videos, you know I use this thing all the time. Okay, I'm going to show you. If you look, I know it's hard to see on this video. I'll put my hand up here so hopefully you can see. You've got three core strands here. you got this middle gap. That's the one we're going to deal with this entire brace, this middle gap right here. And then you got three strands over here. Okay. Now you see how this comes around and goes through the core strands. Then it comes up if you can't, if you don't see it right here. And then it's going up through this little loop we've created. See what I'm saying right there? Okay. This gap right here between the three and the three. And above where this is, this little gap right here, this is what we're going to be dealing with. That's where my fit on the end of that accent cord is going to come into play. Okay, now just so you see this. This is out of the way. Okay. And we see how this, like I said, this piece is going around through there and coming out.
See that's going behind this wrap around piece. See how it's going behind that? Just keep that in mind. It just you'll you'll see in a second. Okay, now this is our basic setup. Now what we're gonna do, now we're gonna start actually weaving. So I'm gonna take out just a little bit of this slack. And remember that gap right there I told you about. We're gonna take our main strand. And again, I'm gonna put this up out of the way, folks, just to get it out of the way. I can get this out of the way so it's not in the way. We're gonna take our main strand, and again, we're gonna go over these three that are on the side that it's on through that middle slot and then under the three on the other side. So whatever side your main string is on, you're going to go over those first three, through the middle lane, and then under these three on this side. Right? And we just pull our slack through. So what we end up having, if you can see this, is this funky like sideways S looking thing going on, okay? Now remember this little gap up here I told you about, right there. See how it's above this one? It's in that, they're all in the center lane. You got this one, you got this one going through, and then we got this gap. This gap right here, above this one and this one, is where we're going to take our accent cord, right? But, but, watch what I'm about to do. Here's our main cord. I'm going underneath there. Reach underneath there and grab your accent cord. This is the way I do it. This is the way I do it. You don't have to do it this way. This is the way I do it. And I'll explain to you in a second why I do it like this. Okay? Now, I said I got a fid on the end of this, right? It's going underneath. So here we go. I'm going to pull up the excess. And I'm going to get to that fid. Now why do I have a fid on there? Because i got to go through this little tiny slot right here. Now it's not that bad right now. You, can, If you don't have a fid, you can just stick it through there and grab the back and pull it. But, tends to make it a little easier and a little quicker, a little more efficient, if you will, to just stick that through there. Remember how I showed you with the with the handy dandy laser paracord pointer? It's going through that top lane or that middle lane above these two right here. It's going that way. Up under this one, we we'll see all that. Hopefully, you can see that good enough. And we're just gonna pull our slack out. And this is the way I do this. This is why another reason I have a fit on here. I'll take this, and normally I don't have it my I don't have all this set up like this. I'll show you what I'm gonna do in case of this video. I'm gonna back out just so you can see this. Okay. Normally, I'm I'm on I'm on my desk. This is not my desk. I've got this crazy setup so I can have the camera up here and see, and I can also see. Right. Normally, what I do is I take this fid. Once I get it through there, like I do, I pull me a little bit of slack, and I take this fid. And there's a little slot on my desk. I just stick it in there. And it holds that fid. That way, when I get to the next repetition, I don't have to pull all the slack and find my fid. It's right there. All I got to do is grab it. Right? But in the case of this, this is what I'm going to do. See this little hole right here? I'm going to stick it in there. We understand that. Now that I got it up there, this, follow it back, what we, what we just ran through there. I'm going to pull the majority, not all of it. Look at that. We got a, a little knot wanting to form right there. It's because it's because of the twist. We got to get the twist out. See that little twist going on there? Got to get that out. Okay. Get this out of the way. 
These two out of the way. Right? This is just all the excess from this coil. Just get these out of the way. Okay, I'm going to zoom back in so you can see what I'm about to do. Okay. This is what we're going to do. This is where tighten this section, then this section, then this section, right? I know it's a big jumbled mess, but if you followed what I've told you, you'll be okay. You can do this. The first thing we're going to do is gonna, we're going to reach right here. This is where our main cord starts, and it goes down and through, comes up through this little setup knot we created. We're going to grab this main cord, and we're going to pull this, and it's going to tighten up this loop that I told you to maintain. Right? So we're just going to pull it. Make sure there's not a twist in any of this. I pull this. I'm holding here, pulling this direction, holding back as I'm pulling this th this direction. Right? Now, we're going to switch hands, and we're going to grab this cord, the accent cord. Okay. Up here at the top, where it's coming out the back of this bracelet. We're going to grab our, grab the core strands holding back this direction as we pull the accent cord that direction. See what I'm saying? And it's going to tighten up this little setup loop we got going on here. See how it did? Okay. Now that you're kind of holding, maintaining that, you're going to grab this right here, which is all this... Accent cord. You're going to grab it and you're going to pull it through. Making sure there's not a twist in it. You see how it goes underneath, like I showed you, underneath this. All right? So we're going to pull this. Now when you get here, you can hold back and pull. Kind of push up. Okay, we got that. Now, this is the loop. Now the loop that we have to maintain is on the other side. Everything's just kind of flip flop. That's a, that's the flow of this, but flips one side to the other. Most of you know you've done these bracelets. You know you do everything one direction and you go back the other direction. You do everything same way with this one. Okay, now I'm gonna back out just a drop so you can see what I'm about to do. Remember, here I'll back out so you can see. Remember, I've got this fit up here. That's the end of my accent cord, and all the excess is just hanging down there. Okay, remember that's up there. Now, this is what we're going to do. Okay, this is how we're going to do this. Okay, we're going to take our main cord. We're going to go over the first three, through the middle lane, the middle slot, and under the next three. Over three. Through the slot, under three. Okay, now you see over here, what's going on over here? This is my accent cord where that fit is. Notice my hand is in front. So I'm going to take this slack right here. And I'm going to pull this slack all the way through. Above this. This cord is over this one. Let's pull it all the way through. All right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold this up here so you can see. I'm going to reach underneath and I'm going to grab that fit. I'm going to come out. What that's doing is it's making sure that this accent cord is going underneath right here. All right? Now here's the end of my cord. The end of that accent cord. And all that excess. Here's the end of it. Now, like I said. Remember. The middle lane. We're only dealing with this middle lane in between everything. So what we're going to do. We're going to go. Over these first three. And under these next three. Through this middle lane. But we're going to do it 
Not down here. Not in between these two, but up here. And it's going to go underneath this piece. We'll get that. Now you just pull your slack out. What I normally do is I'll pull me enough slack through. And I'll take that fid and I'll stick it in that little slot on my desk. But in this case, I'm going to put it up here in that little hole. So, I'm going to take this. I'm going to just pull the excess through. Not all of it, though. Don't pull it all through. I know you're looking at that going, man, that's a tangled mess. What's he got going on? If you followed my directions, this will make sense. Okay. Now, we're going to tighten this thing up in sections. And we're going to start with this hand. Let me back out a little bit so you can see how I'm going to do this. All right. This hand, you're going to reach up here to the main, the main cord. You're going to grab it right here at the top. And I'm going to pull this, and it's going to pull the slack out of this loop that I say maintain. Make sure there's no twists as you do this. Alright. Now. I'm going to reach over here on this side. And this one right here, the accent cord. I'm going to pull it. And what it's going to do is it's going to tighten up this piece right here. Right? Because this piece has a tendency to not want to stay tight. So you have to do this to get it tight. And what I'll do, I'll zoom in so you can see this. This is the way I do this. To make sure this is always tight, I'll take my finger. Here, let me zoom in a whole bunch so you can see this. If you look at this cord running right here, that's what I'm about to tighten up. By pulling on this top part right here. But when I do it, I'm going to reach back here with my finger. Where this cord wraps around the back of the bracelet. I'm going to take my finger and kind of roll it around. And it's going to pull that slack around. See how it moves right there? And it tightens it up. All right Now, as I'm kind of holding this, some tension on this. I'm going to grab the other end of the accent cord. And I'm going to pull it. And it's going to take out that loop. Right? We see that. And this is again. This right here is the loop that we maintain. Remember so It's always that our main cord that we're going to maintain the loop. And that's it. This time. So I'm going to reach up here and I'm going to push everything toward the top. I'm going to pull that one more time. <coughs> okay, now. This loop, I'm going to take out a bunch. I don't need this much space, so I'm going to take out some of it by just pulling right here. But not all of it. Why? Because we want to maintain this little gap right here. That's where we got to get back through. Remember I told you with with, with, with my handy-dandy laser printer, we got to get through there, and that's what that fid's on there for. It makes it a little easier to stick it through there. All right? <coughs> okay. So we're back here. So now we're going to do the, we're going to make that crazy in sideways S thing again. Our main cord. We're going to go over these first three, through that middle slot, of that middle lane, and under these next three. Over three, through the middle, under three. It's always that middle lane. And this right here. On top of our two accent cords that are over here, above it, we're going to pull this through. Pull all this slack through right here. Right, now we got our little funky S thing. Okay, now, remember, our main strand, the one we just, with the funky S, we go underneath it and we grab... The working end of our accent piece. In my case of this, I got a fid. We come out this way. And we're going to take that fid and we're going to run it through that slot right there at the top. In that middle lane, 
above this one and this one through that middle lane. So in a sense, what you're actually doing is going over these three and under these three because you're going to come over, you're going to pull this way. I'll pull me a little bit through and I'll stick it in my little holder up there and then I'll grab it and pull the majority, not all of it, the majority. Got a twist, got to get that twist out. Okay. Now, we're going to get all that out of the way, best we can. Here, I'll do it this way. Maybe this will work. Okay. Now, there's our jumbled mess that we've got to tighten up in sections again. So, where do we start? We start on this side. <coughs> you remember this way. <coughs> Excuse me. You remember it this way. Here's our main cord, the working end of our main cord. You know, if you follow that, follow it down, that's the working end. Okay, that's where we're going to tighten up. We're going to go up to the top and grab that post. Make sure it's tight. Follow it around right here. This is what we're going to tighten up. It's going to tighten up this loop I said that we maintain. All right? So you pull it. When you get up there, you can reach up there and grab your core strings, holding them this direction as you pull this the other direction. You're simply holding back is all you're doing. And you can, you can pull it as tight as you want. You know, and then push everything up. Just push everything up. All right? Okay, now. We're going to switch sides and grab this one. And remember, when we pull this, it's going to tighten up this little piece here. So everything's flip-flop now. It's going to tighten up this piece. I'll reach around there with your finger. <coughs> I'm sorry, folks. Hang on. <coughs> reach around here. Just wrap. It's because it's wrapping around the back. Just reach around there with your finger. Just kind of roll your finger around. It'll kind of take out that slack as you pull here. Right? We're going to pull this cord that direction as we do it. Right? Now you maintain a little tension on there. You're going to grab the, the end of your accent cord. You're going to pull this. And it's going to take out this loop. Make sure there ain't no twist in it. Right now, as we get it, we're gonna kind of push everything up. Now, this is the loop that we have to maintain. Why? Right? So we got that slot there. We got to get through, but we don't need it that big. So I'm gonna take out some of that. All right? Okay. Now I'm gonna do this again. Our main cord, go over three, through the middle slot, under three. Pull out the slot. Right? Now, like I said, you're going to go underneath and grab the end of your working end of your accent cord. And you're just going to pull it through. Pull the slack through. Okay, now, I'm going to take that into your accent cord. And you're going to go through that slot right there. Now notice, notice this. Here's where the working end's coming from. And that's the side where this thing's going through there. I know it's hard to see. See how this cord goes down and then it goes up through this little loop. When you go through there, you want to stay on the same side where that accent cord is. That way you'll be up in that gap. Because if you go through on this other side, you're going to be in between these two. You don't want to be down there. You want to be right up here at that top. That's critical. And the thing is, you'll get used to it. And especially, and then when you get to the very bottom of the bracelet, just remember, I gotta go through the very top. And you just go through this direction. And you pull out the majority of your slack. 
I'm going to set it up there in my handy dandy holder. Pull out the majority of my slot. Now we're back to this tangled thing that we've got to tighten up in sections. All right? I'm going to reach up here, right here. I'm going to pull this. It takes out that loop. The loop I said to maintain, we're no longer maintaining it. We're just tightening it up. All right? And I'm going to push everything up. And as I'm holding this direction, holding back, I'm going to tighten it. All right? Now I'm going to switch hands. I'm going to grab the top of this accent cord. Now remember, you can reach back here with your finger where it's coming through. I kind of roll it around. See how it's loose right there? I'm going to roll this around as we're pulling here. All right? Now, the working end, we're going to pull that, and it's going to take out this loop. Make sure there's no twist in these cords when you do this. Holding back on this side, pulling on this side. Push it up to the top, push it toward the top buckle. Let's see how that is. Now it's starting to kind of form the pattern. Now, maintain this loop. But don't pull it all the way. You need enough that that old gap will stay there. All right? Now, make sense. I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to go through that whole repetition one more time. Maintain the loop. And we're going to create the funky S. The, side, the sideways S. So, we're going to take this. We're going to go over these first three that are on this side. Through that middle lane. And underneath these. On top, above all this accent you got over here. See what I'm saying? It's above it. I just pull your slack all the way through. All right? Underneath, 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 and grab your accent. Now, over those first three, through that little gap at the top. Come out this direction. Pull them, pull some slack through. I'll put in my little holder up there, and then I'm gonna grab back here and I'm gonna pull out the majority of my slack. Got a twist coming. Get rid of that twist. Don't pull it all the way because we're gonna have to tighten it. All right. Now we're back into the jumbled mess again. What do we do? Right here. We're going to take out, we're going to pull here and take out this loop I said maintain. Reach up here and grab your core strands and pull. Holding back this direction as you pull this direction. Push to the top. All right? Now we're going to switch hands. Hold your core strands here and grab from the back where this accent's coming out. Like I said, you can take your finger and kind of roll, roll this excess around so it'll, it'll, it'll create, it'll get this as tight as you, you can get it. And just pull. Now sometimes it'll already be tight, and you, you know, but do this every single time because it has a tendency to not want to get tight because you've pulled this and it's kind of messed with it. So you got to do this every single time to make it tight. Push it up, tighten it up. Okay, now reach over here and grab this other end of the working strand and pull it. Mindful that it doesn't have a twist in this little loop. And pull it. Then hold it back. See how I did that? Now the pattern is starting to form. Okay. There you go. I know that's, I know that's, it, you look at that and you're like, huh? Yeah, imagine when I was trying to learn how to do this, watching these people do it and they're not, ex sorry. Let me, let me, give me a second. Let me adjust in my chair here. What's going on here? Watching these people do this, and they're not telling you, pull it this way, do it that way, and I'm over here doing it, and I'm trying, and I'm like, Ugh. and the knot never did want to look right. And I tried and tried and tried, and I kept doing it, kept doing it, and I struggled, like I say, and I figured out, pull this one, pull this one, hold it here, and do all that. That's what all I've showed you. All that is, so this knot will tighten up. 
and it'll look decent, okay? And it'll maintain the way this knot looks. So, if you didn't get it, like I said, by the third or fourth repetition, you should have it. Just be careful. Make sure you maintain this, maintain the loop, so you can maintain that gap. And make sure you reach under the, or whatever. All the little things I told you. Okay, now, you got it. Now I'm going to show you. I'm going to just I back out like I do in all my videos. After I've explained it, I'm going to do it and you can see me do it in action. Okay? Over three. Under three. Going above your accents. Reaching under that main cord, grabbing your accent and coming through. And going through that slot, that gap, and coming out this way. Pulling the majority and putting it in my little holder up there. And then grabbing and re pulling the rest of it. Leaving a little bit because we're going to have to tighten up that. Okay, now we're going to reach up here with this hand and pull this on our main cord. You push it up, hold it back, pull it, and you're just going to switch hands. Now you're going to pull this one using your finger to roll the excess around. Now you're going to switch again and pull this one. Make sure there's no twists. Right? And then push it all up. Pull it tight. Here's the loop we got to maintain. We'll kind of slide it through. Now I'm going to look at this thing. I'm going to lean over the side. I'm going to kind of bend this thing around. I'm going to look at the side of it. And look at the back of it from both directions. To make sure everything looks right. Everything looks right so far. <laughs> like I said, you got a pattern on the display side, but there's also a pattern on the back. Just want to make sure everything's getting done right. Okay. Did we get all that? We're back to, we got to create the funky, the funky sideways S. Over three, under three. Pull up the slack. Underneath, grabbing your accent, coming through. Going through that gap all the way at the top in the middle lane and coming out. Pulling your sum through, putting it in the holder, and pulling the excess through. Not all of it though. So that twist, I gotta get that twist out. You get into the habit of twisting your cord as you're pulling it and getting the twist out. Yeah. Getting, that's a very good habit to form. Okay, now we, we're here. We got this loop that we maintain, we gotta get it out. Holding back, pulling this direction. Push everything up, switch hands, pulling the accent cord while we wrap around the excess on this side. We switch hands again and we pull out the rest of that. All right, pushing it up so it's kind of loose right there. It doesn't here. I'll show you show you this. Let me just zoom in so you can see this right here. This, it, it, watch this. When I pull this accent piece, watch this. It'll tighten up and then it'll come back. You see how when I pull it tight and let go of it, it just goes back in there? Yeah. And then imagine when I go to tighten this main cord up, it loosens up even more. That's what me rolling my finger around when I tighten it up. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get that little bit of slack out so my bracelet doesn't feel like a sponge. I know some people, that's the way they do it. I want my neat, clean, and tight. Y'all heard me say it. Neat, clean, and tight. Right? Now I know some, some knots you can't pull that tight because they will capsize or distort. But in the case of this one, you can pull this one pretty tight. As long as you do it in the correct order to get all the sections tight. Right? Okay, now. I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to do it this time with a little bit of commentary. Over three, under three. We'll slack it. Underneath. Through the gap, pull some of your slack out, putting it in my little holder, pulling the majority of the slack out, mindful of the twist that's wanting to form there. Okay, now. I'm 
pulling that loop out, pulling that tight, reaching up here, the rolling action, and then pulling at it, pushing everything up to the top, pulling like that, but leaving that little loop, because you want that gap, right? Okay, there's a twist forming right there, I can see it. There we go. Okay. Over, over through, under through. Pull it through. Notice, yeah, I'm holding right there. That way when I pull my slide through, it doesn't close this up. Underneath, come through. Through the gap. Pull it through. Stick in the holder. Pull out your excess. Get rid of the twist. All part of the habit. Just getting rid of the twist. Pull. Get rid of the twist, pull it through, reach up, hold everything. Run around, pull it out through, tighten it down. See that? One more time. Over three, under three, pull it through. Reach under, go through the gap and come this way. Put it in your holder. Pull out the majority, get rid of that twist as you're pulling. Okay, we we'll get that. Now let's zoom in and you can, you can see, now that I've done a little bit of it, you can see the pattern start to form. We we'll get that. I know if you if you stick with those, I mean, once you do it and you see how the mechanics, the overs and the unders work, you can come up with your own method of doing it. But I'm just saying that's the way I do it, and that seems to work for me, right? I know it was long, but that's kind of a, a jumbled mess. Like I said, you got to tighten this art, tighten this section, tighten this section, whatever. And I found that to be the best way to 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 maintain, you know, tightness in the knot. And to get the knot to sit and look consistent. Because this is one of those ones that if you don't pull it just right, it's not gonna it's not gonna be even. The middle's not gonna look right, the sides aren't gonna look right. And the back of it won't look right. See everything looks consistent. Every one of the repetitions, every one of the weaves looks consistent and they all look the same. And I don't just mean the sides. I always talk about the sides. Well, yeah, the sides too. And, you know, boop, 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 boop. You know, one's not pulled. One, this was pulled tight and this was not. And this one is. So it was like, but you got, you're working with two cords here of different colors. So you want the way they're interacting with each other to be consistent. Right? And that's what I'm saying. I found a, I found in pulling it this way and pulling there, tighten this section, tighten this section, tighten this section, repeat, tighten. You know, rinse, rather, rinse, or, what is it? Lather, rinse, repeat. There we go. You see what I'm saying? But, there you go. I'm going to weave this out to the end. When I get down to the end, I'll come back and I'll show you um, how I finish this one off. And I'll show you how I start stitching it. Now, the stitching on this one, it, it's, it's, it's got a tricky beginning. Anchoring your cord. But the actual stitching, it's not hard at all. You think, oh my gosh, that was a jumbled, knotted mess. Yeah, the stitching's not really hard. It's just starting and getting your cord anchored correctly. Right? Okay, now, with all that, 
Let me weave it out and I'll be back. Okay, folks. I got it woven out to the end and I'm about to finish this off. Not quite sure how I'm going to do this yet. I am. Um, because, you know, this one, this one, you try to get everything through that center, center lane between all the core strands. So it can be a little tricky on how, how you do this. But like I always say, you try to maintain the, the pattern of the weave when you finish it off the best you can. Um, we want to get our cords on the back side. Okay. Now, with that said, I'll I throw this out there. How in an earlier part of the video, I was sticking the fid in this little hole and I, and I said on my desk, I'll stick it in a little slot, right? So it's right there and I don't have to go find my fit. What I actually do, this mat, right here, you can't see it's right off camera, but the edge of this mat's right on the edge of my, the surface of my desk and I just kind of slide it up under that mat. You see what I mean? I just slide it up under there. That way it's sticking off and I can reach up under, I can reach up under that cord like I showed you and grab that fit thing and do it and then I'll stick it over here on this side. And then when I do it, I'll stick it over here on this side. That's all I, I was doing. I found it, it was just a little, little hack, I guess, that I come up with that worked for me. And when I started filming it, I seen those holes and I was like, you know, I'll just use those for that purpose. These are where I've put, you know, other connection points. Okay, so. I'll zoom in a little bit and see now. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that camera's pointing straight down, but I'm, I'm over here at this angle looking at this, so it's kind of hard for me to see. I'm trying to do this so the camera can see it. So this is going to be a little difficult. You might you might get the back of my head in the camera frame when I lean over to look at this thing a little bit better. But let's see. What do we got here? I don't know if I can get one more. Yeah, maybe I can get one more. Repetition through there. Let's see. See, this is the loop. Remember, here, I'll zoom in. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can hopefully see a little bit better. Yeah, this, this mat comes in handy. That's like the bullseye. I try to center it up on camera so I'll, so I, as I'm working, I can kind of use it as a stay in frame reference as opposed to having to look at the computer monitor all the time. Um, okay. Well, I told you, you maintain the loop. That's the loop I'm maintaining. It gets kind of small as you get down. Let's see, I may be able to do this one last time. Let me look at this other one and see how I did it. I don't know, this is kind of a trial in there. Like I said in my last video, finishing one of these off, I know that was always the thing for me when I was watching one of these tutorials. I wanted to know how they, you know, the overs and unders, and then I wanted to know how they finish it. And I got to the point where I didn't always do it the way they did. So I'm going to put that through there. We're going to try this. All I'm going to do is try to do one more repetition on, on this weave. So we're going to get that down in there. Is that right? Yeah, it's a little tight, but it's right. Okay, now we're going to make sure our accent piece comes underneath, right? Okay. Now we're going to try to find that slot. So let me slide this over here so I can see here. Actually, I might be able to do it this way. Now, it's a tight fit right there, but you're still going through that same spot above in the middle, in the middle slot above both of these cords that are running through there. Make sure I'm not poking anything back here. Yeah, there we go. Uh oh, let's, ooh, I get myself twisted up, didn't I? Underneath and upper, okay. So. Like I said, same, same thing I said before. Got this junk, tangled mess that we gotta tighten up in sections. And right here is where we're gonna start. We'll tighten that one up, make sure it's tight, and then we're gonna pull, pull it over here. Alright. And now, this piece right here, we're gonna do a little roll maneuver. Ok, 
Okay. Now we'll pull this one right here. When you get down to the end, like I said, make sure you don't have any twists in it. When you get down to the end and it's real tight like this, yeah, that's when those twists are kind of hard to get out. I'm pulling it to make sure I don't have a twist in it. Okay, now we're going to pull this one this way, tighten up this accent cord. I'm trying to make sure it doesn't twist up on me. I can see it potentially wanting to. Okay. There's that. Pull that one tight. Okay, now this is what I'm going to do. Pull this one. Okay, this is what I'm going to do because basically I'm, you know, I'm down to the end. Not really much room to do anything else with. I'm not going to try to, you know, when you get down to the end, I said this in a couple of my videos, you get down to the end of the weave and you're trying to fit everything in there, it gets really tight, okay? And remember, if you make it so tight here at the end to fill in the last little bit, granted, you want to get as close as you can, but if you force them through there, and you get it all tight, and do one extra repetition, and it's tight as I'll get out, just remember... You're going to come back and stitch it. And you'll stitch all up, you'll stitch all this up here, no problem. But when you get down here, you'll notice it'll start getting really tight because all that's bunched up together. So just be mindful of that. We already know, like I already say, the top of the bracelet, in most instances, and the bottom of the bracelet never looks the same as the body of the bracelet, right? So, you know, that's just the nature of the way this is. But this one right here, I'm going to do, because this one's already kind of on the back side. And I'm going to wrap this one just to have one more little wrap of this accent piece to come up and over. I'm going to just wrap this one up and go through that center one last time. See what I'm saying? Kind of like that. Now, let me... Let me back out just a little bit so I can see. Now I'm going to probably, let me look at this at a better angle. Yeah, that needs to. Hmm. I wonder if I can do. You know what? I take that back. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do this. I changed my mind. Well, look, I know you probably can't see this very well. You see how right here there's a little air hole, a little gap in there? Over on this side, it, it's, it's come all the way down to the end of this three core strands on this side, right? Everything's covered. But on this side, you still got that little hole. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this cord and I'm going to wrap it across and go down through the center. And that's going to cover this side and fill this side in. And everything will be on the back side. Does so that make sense? Instead of trying to wrap this one around, this side over here needs another, needs something to Kind of fill in that space at the very end of those core strips. So I'm going to just take this and wrap this. And I'm going to stick it right here through the center. If I can get it through there. Right there. Yeah, that's it. Go ahead. What I'm doing... Moving that fid to make sure that I don't have a twist in it when I go to pull it through there. <coughs> okay, excuse me, folks. But same thing, it kind of maintains the pattern of the weave. And it fills in that last little bit of those core strands. Okay, now we got everything on the back. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. I've said this, and 
you know, how tight I pull this thing, just watch. I mentioned, I mentioned it earlier, you know, in the video, when I go to do this, all this tension is going to be released. So just watch this thing. You'll see this thing. It'll jump up a quarter of an inch or so. You'll hear a poop. It'll pop. Sometimes I get it so tight that I can't release it with these things. I actually have to loosen it up down here and slide the carriage up. Just watch. Watch this thing. And we see how much it moved. Alright. We're going to get this out of the way. Now, we're going to look at this thing. Turned out pretty good. Back of it's pretty even. So that side looks pretty good. This side's not that great. I'll show you what I'm looking at. If you can see down this edge, this is something I always do. You can look down this edge and where where this let me pull this over here. Maybe you can see about that. Where this stealth olive is wrapping around. In the accent code where they're coming together right here if you look down it at this angle yeah not gonna be able to see it very well because of the lighting of this but this side where they meet you I, I can look down there I can't get it to show on camera very well I apologize but you see that's a, it's a relatively straight line down through there now the other side not so much. See how it's kind of off right here? These three right here look like they're off. But it's not bad. This one is just, it's, it's hard to get it to, to be consistent. Now, they're, they're even, but where, where these two cords cross each other, so to speak, that's what I was looking at. And that, this one is notorious for not wanting to So you can see it's kind of wobbly right there. But this was no tourist. And you also look down at this way, and you can see where these, same same thing, look down at right there, and you can see. And again, this side over here looks fine. This side right, right there in that section, right there, something, it's just, it's not right. But thankfully, this one's for me. I might be able to kind of... Yeah, that did a little bit. Okay. Okay, now. All right. We, we got that out of the way. Okay, now to stitch this thing. The stitching on this, it's not really that hard. Like I said in the beginning, it's not really hard. Once you get that angle, like a lot of these I do, once you get that angle... It goes right through there. Um, and then it's just a matter of actually doing it. Wrapping that cord around every one of them. Because all we're going to do is we're going to have one piece that's going to follow this stealth olive. The darker piece. It's going to just wrap around, following it all the way down. And then we're going to have another piece that's going to do the other side. And then I'm going to come back and hopefully if it works, I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to I'm gonna follow the two accent pieces, right? So it's gonna have four four stitches on it, basically. If you, you want to look at it that way, but like I said, to, to to anchor it, if you look at the back of this thing, you can see there's like a little groove running down the middle of the bracelet. And if you look, see if I can get it on camera. You see how you can see up under all these accent pieces? There's like a little air hole right there. Now they're tight. That's just the nature of the thing, the way the things are woven together. So, you know, you can't really run it up under these accent pieces up here at the top and expect it to stay anchored because of those little holes. So when you go to start pulling it tight, it's going to tend to want to go up, slip back through or slip through those. Does that make sense? So what I found to do is kind of a little unorthodox, and it's a, it's a little tricky. What I'm going to do, I'll show you. If you look right up here at the top, this you can see this piece. I know it's hard to see on camera, but that piece of stealth olive right there. It's running. And it wraps around, and there it is right there, right? 
I'm going to go up under that. And I'm going to come out here at the top. Right? And the way I'm going to anchor this. You ready for this? I'm going to burn the end of this piece of cord. And I'm going to leave a big old huge ball of plastic on it. I'm going to get a big ball there. And then I'm going to just let it harden. And that ball is going to act as a, a stopper to keep it from pulling through. Does that make sense? See what I'm saying? Just a big glob of melted paracord. And just let it harden up. Don't touch it. Don't flatten it out. Just let it harden up. Just in that shape it is. And that's going to act as like a stopper. It's going to act as a stopper. To keep it from going through. Now if you pull it. It will go through. So you got to be careful. But that's the best way I've come up with to do this. Because I've never... I've only seen one or two tutorials on how to make this thing. And I ain't never seen, I've never seen anybody stitch it. And that, that, that for those who follow my channel, follow my, my Instagram and all that, you'll see, I, that's the first thing I do. I look at a bracelet and I go, can I stitch that? I bet you I can stitch that. And I'll, I'll sit here for sometimes half a day, just running the needle through it, finding, finding where and is that, piece of thread going to sit right? Is it going to look right? And I've done some that haven't looked all that great, but I've still posted pictures of them. But, um, this one, it turns out pretty good if you, if you can get it to do right. Now, I'm going to try this. This is a very tight getting it up through there. I want to say, and like I always say, you can bend that buff or bend that bracelet back if need be. That way you can get a straight shot up under there as opposed to trying to dig up under there. But see, these, these new fids I got, they, they got a very blunted tip on a rounded tip. So they don't poke the cord as easily as the other ones. Pericord EU. It's a type 1 fid. I got some type 3s over there. Now, actually, I got me some other ones on order. I only ordered a couple of them just to see. And I was like, yep, these uh, these are worth it. So I went ahead and ordered me some more. But I'm going to try to get this up under here. But the thing is, these, they will bend. If you put it under there and you try to force it, it being that it's, it's made out of brass, they'll bend. Those stainless steel ones won't bend. But the stainless steel ones, they got a sharper, more prominent point on it than, you know. I'm telling you, these things right here, and plus the the threaded hole in the back, yeah, it. I guess the threads are better. I don't know because this is so much easier to work with than those other. Oh, always, always have it in there so it won't come out. Yeah, so this is not going to go up under. I'm gonna have to do like I've said before, coming from the other direction and kind of make your hole. And then pull it out and then go back through the hole you've made. Cause this is a tight. Yeah. We see how I did that. It's going up under that piece of stuff all of it is coming out on the other side of it. Right? I'm going to create that hole, but I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to go through this way. I say that. Yeah, there it is. I got it through there. I just got to get it past this piece of accent color. And that's, I got a callus on my hand right here from doing this. Okay. Now, we're going to pull it through. Or push it through. <laughs> get it through there. Like I always say, once you get it through there to that point, reach up there and press back down on it. So you close that hole up you created. That way there's some resistance. So you don't. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and pull this. 
And what I'm going to do, is I'm going to pull this all the way up. Like I said, I got that big ball of plastic on the end. I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to make sure that it's going to catch. Right there. Yeah. As long as I don't wrench down on tension on this, it's going to stay there. But I'll let you see it. Hopefully you'll be able to see this here. we bring the slide in. Maybe you can see right here. My handy dandy laser paracord pointer. Right. Right there. At the tip of this thing is where that little ball of plastic is. And it's just big enough that it's going to keep it. I ain't going to say keep. It's going to help prevent it from going up under there and pulling out. Alright. Okay. Now. Before we get going. Make sure we don't have nothing on our desk, which I've already done all that. I've always said, you know, once you start stitching, not so much with this. Oh, I, I guess I should have said this. I've got a piece right here. Um, it's about four feet and three inches, right? It shouldn't even take that much. It's probably going to take about three, three and a half feet. But I just want to make sure that I have enough to finish it. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the end of our cord. And all we're going to do. Right here, we see fuzz, fuzz. All we're going to do is follow the top of this piece of olive, or stealth olive. We're going to follow the top of it. We're going to go through this loop right here. We're going to come out kind of right here at the top. Now, this first one's not going to look all that great. But once we get it going, that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow... When we're following this piece, we're gonna do we're gonna be at the top. So we're gonna have a piece in between every one, but we're following the stitch is following the piece of main cord that is below it, back this way. Right? Okay, so we're gonna go through here. I'm gonna pull our slack through. Mindful of your twist. Mindful of the twist. I know. This is hard to see. See how it's going above it? And we're going to wrap around. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to stick it right through the middle of this thing. Everything, everything's going through that center lane in between all them core strands. So, you know, it's just going to start getting, it's going to tighten this thing up. It's already pretty tight, but doing all that, it's going to tighten it up even more. Now, this first one, like I say, it might be a little difficult. i got to get the angle on it right. But all we're going to do, I'll show this. Those three core strands that are on this side, all we're doing is taking this piece of stitching. This is pretty much the way I do all the stitching you see me do. It's just going to wrap around those three core strands. You know what I'm saying? The three that are on this side, it's just going to wrap around them. You see what I And it's just going to spiral down just like this piece of stealth all of this. That's all, that's all it is. The key is getting it to go through the middle. And like I said, this one's not that hard. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm following the top right, right here. At the top of this piece of stuff off, and I'm gonna go right there. Right through there. And I'm gonna come out on the back side. And it's gonna kinda come out right next to that glob of plastic. I'm gonna get it through there and then I'll, I'll hold it up there so you can see. See how easy that went through? Right through all I want it. Look where it's going through. And you see where it's coming out. And if you look, you can see this piece of stealth off. It's running right here. That's the piece we're following. It's running, it goes around. See what I'm saying? So we're going to push this through. Oh, this is maroon, by the way. If anybody's wondering, this is maroon. Some of my favorite colors. This Normally, I would use, 
like on this one right here, I did. Olive drab, maroon, and gold, right? This one I decided to do a little different. I've got this shockwave and this really dark stealth olive, and y'all have seen me make bracelets like that before. But I thought I'd try. This This is going to be go uh, maroon, and I'm going to attempt to do the middle and the gold. I'm not sure how this is going to look, but that's what I'm going to do. See where it's at? Just kind of pull it. And it'll kind of seat it right down in there. Okay, now. See where it's coming out on the back side. All we're going to do on this one, this is pretty easy right here. Basically, all this is is you're just wrapping the thing around. It's not that hard to get it to go through. You saw how easy it was to get that to go through. Now, this one's even easier. You just got to make sure you go through the right spot. What we're going to do is this little piece of accent. We're going to go right up under it. Bam. And we're going to follow this next piece of stealth olive right across the top of it. Okay, now this is the way I do this. I'm going to pull it through. Mindful of your twist. Always be mindful of your twist. Okay, now. This is the way I'm going to do this. See where I got it. This is where I want it to go. Right at the top. All right. But we're going to run it, we're going to run it, follow it around, and run it right through there again. Now let's see if I can get this. I'll let you see this here. <coughs> I'll zoom in a little bit. Maybe this one will go through as easy as that first one did, and you'll see how easy it is. Just watch. Now there is a little bit of an angle on it. You gotta get see. It's not hard. Look, just let you look at it. You can see kind of it's got a little bit of an angle, not much. I mean it's pretty much just goes straight through. Alright? Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna push it through and I'm gonna pull out the majority of the slack. Okay, mindful of your twist. And when you get when you get to close to the end, make sure it seats on the top of that piece of stuff all not on the bottom. We want it up here in this groove, not this one. Right? Because if you put it in the wrong groove and then you tighten it up, yeah, it's kinda hard to get it out of that groove. So when you go to pull it, just kinda however, you know, I can get it up in that groove. Once you get it up there, you just, if you notice, watch it. See where it is? When I pull on it, it's going to pull it down in that groove. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of disappear over here on this side. I mean, I can see it a little bit, but you can still see it right there. See what I'm saying? You can still see it, but it kind of disappears up under all that in that little groove. Like I say, after you do this a lot, all the way you get down, that's what tightens everything up. It's going to get really tight. But that's it. That's all there is to it. Now we see where it's coming out. Here, let me get the end of my, my stitching needle. You see where it's coming out. Again, it's, it's coming out below this next piece. The piece that's going this way. Not necessarily the next piece of stuff off because you got one going this way and then the next one goes this way. And the next one goes this way. We're going this direction. So you want to come out below that next piece that's going that direction. All you're going to do is run up under this look of the accent color. See? It's not. It, it, it doesn't take a lot of pressure. And like I showed you, there's, there's some gaps in there. It'll go through there. Pull it. Pull your slack out. Mindful of your twist. All right. Follow the top of that cord around. Follow it around in this, this groove. There we go. Look at that focus for me. Follow it around. And we're going to go right through. Right through there.
you see how easy that is? I'm going to pull her flat there. Now, I'll say this. I'll, I'll show you this right here, okay? The way I'm going to stitch this, when I get to the gold and I do the stitching, I'm going to be running the gold through this same, same area over here, kind of. But, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to go up under this piece of stealth olive, and I'm going to go up under that piece of maroon, which can be a little difficult. So, you know, you want to pull that piece of maroon tight right now, but not so tight that when you come back to do the other part of the stitching, you can't get under it very well. Does that make sense? But we got it through there. Mindful of the twist. Get that twist out. Make sure it's going to seat right up in that little groove. And then just pull it. And I'll always look right here at the edge. See how you can see that maroon? I'll look right there at that edge and I'll just kind of uh, and get it to kind of fall down in that crack so you can't, you don't see it as much right there but you can still see it right there make sense that's that's all there is to that i mean that's it it's not that hard it once you once you pop it through that pop it through the bracelet and you realize you just got to make sure you stick it through the right place Go down to the to the next piece of accent. We just poke it through. We poke it through. A lot of slack. Mindful of that twist. Just kind of pull it. Now, I'll show you this one more time. It's coming out here. We're gonna go. We're gonna follow the top groove of this piece of stuff olive right here and we're going to go through right there and I'm going to do this so you can see this so it has got a little bit of an angle on it not so much this way. It's not tilted this way. But right here, it's kind of got a downward angle a little bit. It, 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 it does depend. Because I've done this quite a, uh, a few times. And it just depends on how the nature of how all these, these knots fall together. Right? When you pull all this tight. So, you know, I made a few of them and that angle was a little bit steeper than it is right here. But just look. You'll see where you, you need to come out at. And just kind of poke it. Feel it, and you'll feel it. It'll go right through there. We'll pull the slack out, mindful of the twist, mindful of the twist. And make sure, like I say, make sure before you pull it tight, you get it to go in the correct groove. You don't want it to fall below the cord you're following. You want it to be above the cord. Because I'm telling you, if you put it in the wrong one and you go to tighten it, then it's a pain to reach down in there and try to, to loosen it up and get it to go, to move it into the groove you want. But we got it where we want it. Watch when I pull it. You'll see it kind of disappear. All right? But you can see it right there. Very subtle. One more time. Let's see. Let you see this. I'm going to go through right here. See how easy this is. It goes right through. There's a gap in there. Pull it. Mindful of your twist. Now if you want, when you get to this point, you can kind of give it a little snug. Okay, now we're going to do this again right here. Follow the top. Follow that groove. Make sure you follow the right groove. You come through right there. 
We're just going to go. So there is too. Pull out your slack. Be mindful of your twist. Make sure it's going to seat in the right place. You see where it is. And when I pull on it, you'll see it kind of disappear into those cracks. I know it's not in focus very well, but you'll see. Whoop, see, it just popped in there, but you can still see it right there. So I'll just do it, and then we're going to follow it all the way to the end. All right? And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to show you all this. Um, I'll, here, let me back out. Just for the sake of the length of this video. Once you, I mean, you do it, you think, ah, oh, once you do this, I explained to you how to do it. Once you do it, you'll see, oh, well, that's not hard. That's really not that hard. It goes right through there. If you get that angle, it goes right through there. All right, I'm going to stitch this one out. All right, and when you get down here to the end, just be mindful because you've got, it's kind of not, not the same. And... Here, let me go ahead and do this. This is I'll show you this too. I probably should have already did this. See how this one, this accent is above this one. I'm gonna take this because I still got that fit on there, and I'm gonna run it up under that piece of stuff olive right there. That way it's not it doesn't get cut and burned. I don't like having my cut and burn right here next to the paste that wraps or through the slot on the buckle. I just, that's I just don't like that. I'm gonna try to bring it up a couple. A couple of weaves, but in this this case, I'm gonna just bring it up under this piece right there. See that? That way, the the two pieces, the accent piece and the stealth olive piece, they're gonna be right next to each other. We do this, be mindful because it's got a twist in it. We got, we want to get that twist out. See that? Now we got them right next to each other. And like I like I always do. We'll see how much I got left. I've got just over a foot of the accent left. And then this, the main cord, I've got about ten inches, right? And like I said, you had a 10 foot piece and a 10 foot piece and I offset it. Remember when I set up my core string, I offset it a couple of inches. That's about how much I offset it. The, dis the difference between where this cord ends and where that one is, that's how much I offset it when I set up my core string. Does that make sense? Because these are both the same length. And this weave is pretty much, you know, the same amount of cord being used for, you know, each, each color or each half, right? But, with that said, so, you know, what, what I say, 10 feet and 10 feet, and I'm doing this for a 7-inch wrist, and I added two right at 2 inches, so it's a 9-inch bracelet from connection to connection with two 10-foot pieces, or a 20-foot piece of a solid color. So that was a pretty good measurement. Now, you know, some of you might want a little bit less slack on the end, scrap on the end, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm going to go ahead and cut these. Like I say, don't cut them right down there. Always give yourself a couple inches. That just gets this out of the way, so when you're stitching, it's not in the way. And it leaves some of this here so it doesn't get sucked back in there and get, get lost, because that's not a good thing. And we'll just burn the ends. I'm not going to try to smooth them out or anything like that, because these, these little ends are just going to get cut off and thrown in the trash. They're not long enough to do anything with. But I just don't want it to fray and all that. I'm going to just, boop, that's it. But that's all there is to this. Folks, this one's not, it's, it's not hard. The bracelet itself is, gives you more difficult than the actual stitching. But, um, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this side out. All the way down and finish it. 
And then I'm going to come back on the other side, and I'm going to stitch it in the same maroon, doing the mirror image on the other side of the bracelet. When I get down to the end of that, I'll come back, and I'll show you how I finished it off, and I'll show you how I start off with the gold. And uh, if I use the gold, I don't know yet if I'm going to use it. I thought, uh, Could have done. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But I'll go ahead and do all that. And I'll come back then. All right, folks. Stick around. And I'll show you the rest of it. Okay, folks. I'm back. I got, I've got. i got the maroon. It's all stitched out on both sides. Um, That first piece I used. What did I say? Four feet? Or a little, a little more than four feet? I, I forget exactly what it was I said. But what I had left over was... About four, or uh, about a foot and a half left. So the second piece, I cut at three feet, and I had this much left, which uh, right at eight inches. So I would say three feet for that stitching following the main cord would be a good measurement. Okay, now I'll let you see the end of it right there. And all I did was, you know, just follow it around, just like I showed you on both sides. Follow it around, and, you know, I got them all right here in the same spot. They kind of all end up there just the way this weave is. Okay. Now, I thought about this, because the stitching for this middle part, we're going to follow this shockwave color right here in the middle. We're going to follow it, and we're going to do it. It's going to be right above like this piece right here the, the stitch is going to be right there on the top side you're not going to see very much of it right and i thought about maybe a moss which, which is very similar to this green that's in the shockwave pattern or an olive drab and it's it's close to and i was like hmm you know what just go with your initial instinct of gold because you're not going to see very much of it. And I think that if I used one of the the moss or the olive drab, because you're not going to see very much of it, you're not. it's not going to be noticeable. Right? Um, so I'm going to go with the gold. Even though it's a, it's, it seems like it's a, a contrasting color, if you will. Because you're not going to see very much of it. I think it's, I think this is going to look good. I think. I hope. Okay. Now, I'll show you how to do this. Basically, we're going to do this. It's the same thing. We're just following the other cord around. And it's, it's basically the same, the same pattern. We're just going to follow it around. And I cut this piece. Let's see. What did I say? I, I think I cut it at four feet also. Just to make sure I have enough on this first run. Okay. Now, I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to start off, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to start this. And basically, it's going to start the same way the, the maroon did, kind of in the same location. We look. If we look, hopefully we can see this, probably. Probably can't see it very well. Let me pull the light over here. So here's here's where if it'll focus right here. See that little shiny glare? That's that ball of plastic on the tip of the first maroon piece. Right? And the second one is right there. I did it the same way. I'm gonna do the same thing with the gold. And I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna run it. Up through there also just like I did that first one that's the same spot I'm gonna run that gold through and it's gonna come out right in this area we're gonna run it around and it's gonna kind of it's gonna be kind of awkward right here at first right top of the bracelet is always a little awkward it's gonna run it around and it's gonna go up under this piece of stealth olive and this piece of maroon and I'm going to go up through this center hole. That way they're stitching on that first piece running right there. 
All right. And then we're just going to circle it around the back. And we're just going to continue doing that. Now, let me get this started. This is going to take me a second to get this needle to go through here correctly. So let me get it through here, and then I'll show you once I get it through. Because this, like I said, this is a tight fit trying to get this to go through here. It's this, it's this first part where you're trying to anchor it this tight. But once you get it through there and you, you actually start, it, it's not that difficult. But the most difficult part is getting it. I'll show you. Let me, let me get this to go through here. This might take me a second. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. I can see it. You can see the tip of it right there. Now, I don't want to jam it through this piece right here, so I'm going to have to kind of bend this, bend this out of the way a little bit to get it to go. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a little tight, tight fit. See where I got it going through. All right. It's coming out pretty much in the same pace as the first piece of maroon did. Now, let me get this through here. So that's pretty tight. <laughs> it's so tight I can't pull it through. There we go. All right, we got it through. Now, as always, press it back down and fill that hole in. Okay, now, I'm going to take it in because ne I never did do this. I'm going to put that... Create that little glob on the end. There we go. Just let that thing hard. Let me blow on it. Oh yeah. Okay, now. I'm going to get this out of the way. Put this over here in scrap pile. See how it doesn't focus? That's what I'm talking about, folks. I can't really just... There we go. Okay, now. Let's see. Let's get all the twisties out and everything. Let's pull our slack through. Now, be mindful when you do this, because that other piece of maroon is right there. So when you pull this, you don't want to accidentally have it pull that piece of maroon through, right? Just be mindful. Watch it as you do it. Now you see, now there's another big glob of plastic right next to the first one. The first one you can't, you kind of can't see, but it's, it's there. See, you got one, two, right? Okay, now, what we're going to do, this is the, the difficult part with this. This is the attention to detail. I'm going to say, like I said, this, it's going to kind of run. Oops, sorry, I'm out of frame. It's going to come from where it's at. We're going to kind of follow the bottom side just for this, this one piece. We're going to follow the bottom side, and we're going to run through up under this piece of olive and up under that piece of maroon. But when it comes out, we're going to follow the top part of it right here in this little group, right? And this is the difficult part with this, is getting it up under there and not jamming it through that piece of maroon, okay? And if you come down here at the bottom, there's a little bit of a, a, a hole that you can get your needle started in. And just work it through there kind of slow. You see... It come out underneath that maroon. 
Now, it's not it's not up here in this little groove where I want it, but I, I'll get it there. I'm going to get this through there first. All right. I'll pull the majority of the slack through here. Okay, and what I'm going to do to get it up there, I'm going to kind of pull it this direction when it, when it goes to seat in place. See how it's going up under here, but when it comes out, it's going to be on the top side. Just... Trying to pull it so it'll hide that gold piece right there so you won't see it. See, when you look sideways, you can see it, but we don't. Okay, now. I'm going to kind of pull it this way. That way it'll seat down in that little groove right there. Now, this first one, all we're going to do is run through that hole. Because there's a hole, there's a big old hole right there, and we're just going to go through it. Pretty easy, right? Okay, we'll slide through. See how that is? I kind of give it a little cinch and it'll seat it down in there. It might even disappear in there. That's okay though. We're just kind of setting it up to, to actually start. Okay, now what we're going to do, see where it's coming out at. Let me get my needle. See where it's coming out at. Now what we're going to do is we're going to follow. Hmm. Do I, f I don't want to do this. Not sure. If I want to, I'm not sure if I want to follow it across the top here and go through it. Or if I want to follow it below this. So this is the piece I'm dealing with right here. If I want to follow it across the top. Or the bottom. I'm thinking the bottom because if I try to pull, if I try to sit it on top of this piece right here, when I go to pull it tight, it's probably not going to stay right there. It's probably going to want to move. So let's have it fall into this groove. Yeah, let's try that. Like I said, I, I, I sat here the other day messing with this. Let's see, right here. See where I'm going through it. And it's going to be just like this one up here. We're going to go through right here. And we're going to go up under that piece of stuff off and that piece of maroon. But when it comes out, we want it to be right here on the top side of this piece of accent color. Right, this is it. It goes around right there. Okay. So we're going to go through right here the bottom. I'll work it through. Like I said, this is the hardest part, trying to get it up under. If it'll focus. Yeah, it's like a little focus for us, is it? Wow. Yeah, it's going to focus on everything but what I want it to. You can see, see how it's wanting to come above that piece of maroon? Just kind of angle it, ease it. See, now it's up under that maroon. That's what we want. That's the way I want it. I'm oh, sorry. And we're going to just push it through. Okay, now let's see. Let me see how this is going to turn out. Like I said, do I follow here? up here. I'm, 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 I'm thinking right here because there's more of a gap and it'll seat down inside that gap. See what I'm saying? Once I pull it tight, I mean obviously we're not going to see the back of it, but that side, once I pull it tight, it's going to go down in that gap a little bit, I'm thinking. Let's see. A little bit. You can still kind of see it, but that's okay. That's okay. But on this side, we're going to pull it up this way. That way it'll follow the top. 
that way to follow here as opposed to being on the bottom side of that piece, right? Now to get through here, we're just going to kind of poke it through. And it's going to come out back here where all them melted pieces are. <laughs> See, it went right through there. And get this in focus. See where I went through at? And you can see where it's coming out at. Yeah, it's just not going to focus. But I'm going to do it again. I'm going to follow the bottom side of the next one. So I'm going to be in this groove right here where my fingernail is. But let's get it through there. Pull out our slack, mindful of the twist as we get close to the end. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this. I'm going to pull this real tight to see if it falls, if it disappears in a crack, which we, is not what we don't want it to do. I don't know. See, that may not. I don't know. Here, let's pull it through what happens. Yeah, I don't like the way that's sitting right there. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I don't like the way that looks. I really don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Hopefully I'm going to go back through here. I'm going to try something different. Let's see. Did I, hopefully I didn't jam it through anything just then. We're going to try this a different way. I'm going to run it back through and I'm going to run it across the top of this piece and see... That way it'll come out, because it's not coming out exactly where I want it. Yeah. What I'm doing is running the needle back through where it, where it came. That way I can pull it back out. And now I'm going to run it across the top. See, I, I had it going in that group. I'm going to try running it up here. You see if that will cause it to... Okay. I'm going to go back through here. Just like we just did. Now, we're going to have it run here as opposed to here. Right, I want to do it right here. Yeah, see, now it's coming out more at the top of that piece right there. See, if I pull it tight, so I just don't like the way it sits right there, though. But that's okay, this is the first one. But see now the gold piece is coming out right there at the top of that accent piece as opposed to see before I know you probably couldn't see it on camera very well it was coming out right here and it was covering up that accent piece but it was running out of name now it's actually coming out where that groove is in between this piece of stealth olive and the accent piece is right there in that little groove, and that's where I want it. Okay, so I'm going to run it back through here. This is we already did it. The hole's already there, so I'm going to go through pretty, pretty easy. Okay, pull it through. Am 
half of the twist. Okay, now it's it's. Whoa. See now it's more. Now it's more where I want it. Man, come on and focus. See now it's more where I want it. It's coming out at the top piece of that accent as opposed to where it was before. And I'm gonna pull this and see. Is it gonna disappear down in there? Nope. That one didn't anyway. See, sometimes that's what happened, where you have the same, where two pieces of cord meet, whether it's the same piece or not, or the same color or whatever, it doesn't matter. When you go to pull it, sometimes it'll, it'll fall down in the crack, and we don't want that. So I'll, I'm going to test that out. Like I said, I messed with this the other day to see proof of concept, so to speak. Now this one, we're going to follow it. Right here in the same groove. Sorry. And this next groove down. We're going to wrap it around and we're going to go through up under this piece right here. And just like before, we got to get it up under that piece of stuff on and that piece of maroon. So it's wanting to come out above the maroon. So kind of angle it. And you, bam, there it is. All right. Now I'm going to run my needle through. That's, that's the hardest part of this right here, is getting it to go right there. Now we're going to pull the slack through. Get that twist out. And get it to see right there in that, in that groove right there. I'm going to pull it. Hopefully, I'm going to see how much of it I can get to. See? Now, I'm going to pull it up so it makes sure it goes in that groove. See? And you don't see it. So much on the front, but when you look at the side, you'll see that gold, which that's no problem, no problem. This is a compromise. I, I really wish you wouldn't see it so much over there on the side, but that's okay. I want the front side to look a certain way. But see, you see how I'm doing this? It's kind of a trial by fire. Like I said, I've, I messed with this second stitching in here in the middle the other day. And we're going to run it through. I'll let you see again where I'm going to go through at. Coming out here, psh, man, this thing just will not focus. Coming out here, I'm going to follow it up right here in this little bit of groove. We're going to go through it right there. Right there. I'll get it through there and I'll show you. See, it goes through there pretty easy. And don't let the pattern on the cord, because there's two pieces of cord, they all kind of meet right there together. But you can see it comes out just below. So I'm going to run it through that next groove. Right. I'm going to pull this through, and I'm going to pull it tight and see if it's going to sit right. Right there. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, such, it's such a small, even though it's kind of a, 
I wouldn't say co- completely contrasting color, but it definitely stands out as a, a brighter color. But because you're seeing such a little amount of it, I think it's going to it's gonna be just the right amount of pop. And that's, that's all there is to it. I don't so much like the way it's doing around here. But, like I say, I guess that'll give it a little... Yeah, it'll work. Like I said, we're, I'm, I'm trying to get the front to look so good. This, uh... Okay. We're going to follow it around again. And, but to get it through there, we kind of come down here to the bottom. Because there's a little hole right there you can it'll go through. It. Angle it, get the angle on it. That way we're going up under that piece of maroon. We see that? We push it through. And once we get it through there, And I'm pulling it tight and it's pulling it down in that groove. Oh yeah. That's gonna work. Yeah, that'll work. I would just carry on until we get to the end. Follow it around, we go through that same spot. Just follow on top top of that. And you go through right here. And it goes through pretty easy. I say that and I can't get it to go through. There we go. Push it through. Pull the slack through. And then twist out when you, once you get it there, I'm gonna pull it. Kind of get it to seat down in that little groove. See how that works? You don't see very much of either one of those pieces of stitches, but it's just enough. I'm gonna just run this out to the end. When I get done, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the other side the same way. And I'm basically going to anchor the other side in the same place I did the other piece of maroon. Run it up through there and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. But once I get this, these two rows of stitching done, I'll come back and I'll finish it off, cut and burn it and all that. And then we'll do... The on-screen size test, if you will. But, so stick around. I'll be right back. Okay, folks. I'm back. I'm almost done stitching this thing all the way out. I'll, uh, i got about two or three more little repetitions to do. I'll show you one more time. I'll say this. I, um, this piece right here, this final piece, I ended up cutting it... I want to say just over four feet, about four feet, six inches, I think is what it was. And you can see how much I've got left, but I'm not quite done yet. I still got a little bit, but I've noticed this one is, it, it takes a little bit more cord on this stitch because it's wrapping a little bit further. But um, I'll finish this out. I'll show you where I'm at. Here, let's zoom in. A little bit. You can see, you, you can't even see that maroon. Here, let me move that light. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, you can see it there now. See how you can barely see that gold? You can see it at a distance. I know on camera you can't see that maroon very well. I can see it though. It shows up pretty good. 
I, I think it turned out pretty good, pretty darn good. If you ain't know, anyway, let's finish this. Okay, let's see. Like I said, we'll follow it around on the top side. We'll go through right here. See where I'm coming out at. Once you do a couple of them, you'll, you'll get it. You'll see. That's kind of, wow. That's kind of neat looking. I flip you twist. Pull it through. Pull it tight. Alright. I'll show you something. I'll, I'll show you this. I know I said this, but I'll show you again. When you follow it around, we're going to run right here on the top side, but we're going to go through under this olive down here at the bottom of it, as opposed to where we want it. We want it to sit right here at the top, but it's easier to go through right down here at the bottom because there's like a little hole you can get that needle through. And it'll go up under there pretty easy. Up under the all the stealth olive and that maroon cord. Right? Okay. Now you pull it through. Don't get twisted around all that. Tangled around all that. Make sure it's in that groove you, you want it in. When you get it right there, see how it's there? I'm taking this thing like I do a lot of the stitching, just lay it down on the table and pull it that direction. And it'll, it'll tighten it up, but it'll cause it to, it'll cause the cord to go from below. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. We want it to be right here in this little groove. But it's coming out here because we ran it through under there. But when we pull it this direction, it's going to cause it. All of it to tighten up and it's gonna boop, it's gonna pop right over there. See how it did? And just kind of give it a snug. And it snugs it up around this back side. And we're gonna go through this middle again. And see, it goes pretty much, it, it goes right through there. Once you do it two or three times, you'll get it. And it's, it, you'll go, it'll go right through there. Now, that's got a little resistance because it's starting to get tight. But I can tell from all that stitching in there, filling in all them gaps, it's tightening up that bracelet. It really is. I have a feeling that's going to affect the sizing. There's, there's a few bracelets that... You size them one way without stitching, and then when you, if you're going to stitch it, especially when you got this much stitching running through it, it affects the way you should size it. The add to measurement, I, I should say. Metamorphosis modified, most definitely. If you ever make one of them, and then you, you decide to stitch it, you need to size it up considerably for that stitching. Okay, let's see. Yeah, this is going to be the last one right here. Get it right there where we want it. And then we'll pull it, and it's going to pop right in place. All right, it's going to be the last one. It's going to go through this bracelet now. Is it going to, am I going to be able to get it through there? Easy, or is it gonna be a? Nope, it went right through, and it comes out. Like I say, they all kind of just the nature of this wave. They're all right there together when they come out, which is, which is great because that's you know that's those who watch my channel, you know that's the way I want it. Snug it up. <coughs> I'm gonna cut this just to cut it. I'm not saving that little tiny piece. Put my lacing needle in the holder I had right there. It's just force of habit. I'm going to 
Even though I'm about to cut it off, I'm still going to burn that in. Okay. So we don't have to deal with this up here because we've already got these anchored. Anchored. All right. Now. We get our, our smoothing tool out. And if I'm able to, you know, I've showed you in the past, it's a leather stamp. And I am pair of kindness. It's a leather stamp. And if the cut burns big enough, I'll mark it. So we're going to sit that over here. When you get ready to cut and burn, always have your, whatever you use as a smoothing tool. Have it on, on the ready. Okay, now, as always, look at it. Look at it. Make sure everything looks good. Okay. Now look down here at the bottom. This is this is the important part. Make sure everything looks right on the bottom. Make sure everything's tight. You don't have a bunch of slack. A lot of times the bracelet just uh, it doesn't matter what weave it is. A lot of times that end part it'll be real fat, just because. All that flipping and flopping and stitching has caused it to loosen up a little bit. So always check it before you do that final cut and burn. Make sure everything's tight. But then flip it over. And, you know, just give it a little... A little tighten. And all, your little, all your little pieces, just make sure you got all the looseness out. Okay, now, what I'm going to do, since i got them all kind of right here in one place, I'm going to try, because these two right here, I, you probably can't see this very well on camera, but all these are coming out in one place. These two pieces of micro cord are coming out kind of in a slightly that direction, just a little bit more. So they're not all right together. So what I'm going to do is when I go to cut and burn this, I'm going to try to get these. Let's see, how can I do this? Yeah, it's not going to work like I want it to. That's all right. I'll make this work. I'm going to pull them back toward everything else and pull the other ones the other way. That way they'll kind of all, you know, you got them coming out. You got some coming out. Over here, some coming out over here. I'm gonna cross them and I'm gonna pull them that way to draw them together so they'll kind of all kind of meet in a happy middle right there. Okay. I'm not gonna cut this real close because they are like I like I like I was talking about up here where I anchored this. There's a groove running down the middle of this the back side of this bracelet. If you can see this. Right there. And that's where everything's coming out. So you don't want to cut it so close that it makes it hard to burn. And then you end up burning your edges. So I'm going to leave it a little bit longer than normal. Now all that can go in the trash. You see what I'm saying? It's a little bit longer than I normally would. That... But that, that way I can get it all good, and molted and melted, and all of that's going to weld together one big solid piece. I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to kind of hold it here, and I'm going hit, to hit the flame here and have it go up. I'll kind of move that buckle out of the way. That way the heat's going to be up here. Potentially, there's nothing that. Okay. Get a smoothing tool. Have it ready. Okay, here we go. Probably put a cut a little bit more off of that, but it'd be okay. I'm trying to melt it so it's down in that groove and keep it smooth. I'm trying to smooth it out. Oh, sorry, I was all frame. I apologize. I'm trying to 
smooth it out, sort of go down in that groove. And there's a big enough spot. I'm probably use that stamp on it. Let's see. Just get it hot enough to. Yeah, that didn't turn out very well. That's okay though. See? Kind of got that shape of the heart on there. It's kind of hard to see. But there we go. Now let's get everything out of the way. Put everything back in its place. Because everything has a place and every place has a thing. That way you know exactly where it's. When you need, need it, you know exactly where it is. Alright, let's. Here, let's hold this up here and I'll let you see it. Hopefully, you can get a good look at it. The focus and all that good stuff. I think it turned out pretty good. I mean, the, the stitching looks good. Now, the color, it, I think I, I think it did pretty good. It did pretty good. Very subtle. A lot of times, that's the way I do that stitching. Very subtle. Like I tell people, craftsmen, the craftsmanship is in the details. Yeah, that turned out pretty well. Okay. <laughs> Let's back out. Like I always do. If I'm making one for myself, I'm going to try by fire. I'm going to do it right here on camera. We're going to say I had a 7-inch wrist. I'll go ahead and throw these measurements out there again. I had a 7-inch wrist. To add to for this one I did was two inches. I had ten feet of stealth olive and ten feet of this shockwave which is black and olive. Um, I'm going to just call it, check it out, I'm going to just call it like this. On the maroon, four feet and four feet. I'm going to just call it that way. That way you know you'll have enough. Now on the gold, I'm going to say four and a half feet. Because it had just a little bit further to wrap. The way it wrapped around caused it, you know, needed to be a little bit more. Six strand core. All right, now let's see if I can get this on my wrist. It's kind of stiff. It is stiff. I can tell from before I put all that stitching in there to now, the way it feels. Yeah, it's a lot tighter. It's a lot stiffer and all that. And I, I'll tell you, like I said, that, that stitching sometimes... It can affect it. You may need to, to add to without the stitching. And then with the stitching, you might need to add a little bit more to the add to measurement. And I have a feeling, even though I, I added two inches, I think it might be, it's going to fit, I think. It might be a little snug, a little snugger than I would want it to be. I'm trying to loosen it up because this is a, it is a little, I say it's pretty tight it ain't like a sponge. Mine, mine, I don't like mine hard. Tight. Neat, clean, and tight. Alright, right here on camera. Now, flatten it out around the edge and sort of sit on my arm. Actually, that's a good fit. I like that one. It's a good fit. I like just to be able to get the tip of my finger up under there. You know, I, I don't want it so tight. Like I've said before, I don't want it so tight that when I take it off, it, there's going to be marks on my arm. But I don't want it so loose that, it, you know, that's, that, that, that's good. I like that one. I like them a little on the loose side. The fit. But there you go. We're going to call that a double-stitched Orca Jawbone. Takes a, little, takes a little time. Takes a little attention to detail, which a lot of the stitching jobs I do. But if you're patient, it'll look good. I know you can't see the, the, the maroon. There you go. Maybe you can see it a little bit better right there. But it looks good. Looks pretty good.
But with that said, I appreciate you watching. Like, share, subscribe, you know all that. Um, but I'll end this one like I end them all. Keep it neat, keep it clean, keep it tight. Happy weaving, folks.